Hi, good evening to everybody. Today is Facebook Life in English. And one of the topics I've been exploring a lot the last couple weeks, also years, but especially a couple of weeks more intensely is leadership, both conscious leadership, what leadership means in general to people. How does it work in companies? How does it work in your life? How does it work between people? And then we have when you're employed, or you have a business and you employ people, you get to certain roles. Like you either, you become a boss or you're willing to be a leader as well. And exploring that is very interesting because it's really self-conscious as well. Choosing yourself, asking questions. What kind of leader do you, would, would you like to be? How is it working in this company? Depending on what side we're now looking from, of course. And exploring that and looking at myself, how, how, how am I being? What do I choose? What do I allow, uh, inspire, contribute? Where do I go into situations where I'm not empowering or, or supporting people? It's been very interesting just to explore it. For me, leadership is constantly also looking at yourself. If you're wanting to be a really great conscious leader, it's constantly using all the tools and questions, whatever you want to be to other people, willing also to be true to yourself. And then you have environments where people are really literally a boss. They're telling you what to do. There is usually judgments involved, or at least pressure involved. You have to deliver a certain thing at a certain time in a certain way. And not giving a lot of space for people to even create more or be more in that situation or bring in new aspects. It's very interesting where companies really have very determined, this is your role, this is your job. And where there is more of, um, you would say a gray line between what is truly your definition of your job and where you could contribute in many other different ways and many other different areas. Because if you're in a meeting or you're talking together, it's very, very interesting to look at the person working with it has maybe the knowledge and the experience and done for a long time, but other people could have an input, can have ideas, can have contribution. And this is where it's so interesting if you cross areas and contribute to each other and there is an atmosphere and a allowance that people can contribute no matter if they have the right skills behind it or education. Um, so you're supporting people to access their abilities or um, even not even abilities, but maybe just an idea or an inspiration and input. I have that a lot when I talk to people. They say something and it's exactly the information or energy I in that moment required for something else I was looking at. And this is where we all contribute to each other so much. And then there is a lot of companies still around there where people are very squared and they want to deliver and it's all about the numbers, the profit, uh, the speed, and the product. The problem is the product is not, <laughs> the product is of course valuable for a lot of companies. I'm not gonna diminish that, but without people, it would not be the product. So what I, what I also get very curious about or sometimes very surprised about is how little we put in resources for people or we contribute to people or encourage them. Because when people are happy and they know they contribute at their jobs and they, um, have a good working atmosphere, they go home with that energy. And that contributes also to their daily life, through their home environment and all that. And that brings back the next day another energy as well. So I look at, look at that organic way of living where everything inspires to everything. And if a company is willing to look at that as a person, I, these are people we're working with. And yes, we have a product that we're creating. And then I, all of this information, when I was looking at companies lately and talking to a lot of people, it was very interesting to look at then, if I look at myself, am I truly being a leader or a boss to myself? Which are the aspects where I'm more, not even bossy in the way, but if I, if I judge myself for what not creating or not doing the right thing or not delivering in time or postponing, am I choosing that for an energy of being a boss where there is a judgment in that or a point of view? Or am I willing to be a leader that drives things and we have an idea and we're targeting something? Because the funny part is if the result is very fixed, oh, you should be, you should be reaching this, or you, this is what I wanna create. There is often, you already tried to figure out the way you're gonna get there. 
And if you're willing to allow there to be a direction of what you're creating, and then in your creations, you ask questions, you get curious, you're allowed to change, you're like, you empower yourself. Are you willing to empower yourself or are you being a classic boss where you make yourself wrong, where you judge yourself, you're, you're also very impatient. I mean, impatient in the way where you get frustrated or you're not happy about what you create. But it can also be you're only delivering what you're supposed to deliver. Well, I'll do the next thing tomorrow. We're not willing to commit and do it fully. Uh, and this is where, where I'm like, hmm, there's aspects where you might be doing it full on. And then there's aspects where you are still really look, looking at yourself and the way we traditionally look at employees as well with judgments or points of views or stress or press, where you're not allowing yourself to evolve and cherish yourself and like grow greater. And this is a fun part to see because you can have a moment of judgment or point of view, but are you willing to let it go and move on? Or are you gonna use yourself? Are you gonna use that against yourself? But blah, 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 blah. And this is the part where I also go into um, an energy what I really like and something that I think is very kind of important for our lives is if we're committed to it. And commitment was something I really had to look for a long time personally for myself to really explore what it means to me I heard the definition, I heard the concept, I saw the energy and talked to Gary in a class about that. It's very interesting because I saw my commitment to my life was quite low in percentage, but I had no clue what it mean meant if I would have been more or less. It was just a word. It was something, oh, this is interesting. And then I said, so then hearing everything, I was like, oh, but what does it truly mean to commit to my life for me? And I was in that question for a longer time. And I could hear Gary say, well, you don't judge if you're committed. You don't have excuses. You're not doubting. You don't postpone it 10 years ahead. You just, you just start creating it. You, you, you just go, you're committed. You know it will be created, whatever that is. And of course things can change, but you're fully 100% committed to it. And then if it changes, okay, you're fully committed in that moment too. But commitment is something I think that we don't really get taught or we don't see 100%. We see a lot of people engaged and happy and, and very um, maybe even career driven, but committed fully. Like for when I see or I met somebody recently that has a company is totally committed for the company to grow. That meant for him, all the people included he supports growing in the way they require it or desire it or can receive it. And yes, they also have a product product plus service uh, in their company, but he was not only driven by, he was basically not driven by the money. He really liked that his company was doing well, but he wasn't driven by it. He would not let off people just to make a better, more bucks. He would really see how they all could contribute to growing, especially in these times where it's not the simplest thing. He was really, okay, this is, this is a company where we all contribute, create, commit together. And then he was willing to look at that. And it's also, it's not one person doing this. You have to be willing to have more people engage with the same commitment or same similar, uh, so they know what you're going for and you build that up. Because depending on how many people you are, it's very interesting. If it's a few people, a lot of people, it's 50, 100, 150, 200, or whatever, thousands of people. Because it's very interesting to see our, the support. Sometimes people that are employed, they expect things from the employee. That's again, for me, now, there's where commitment does, is not there anymore either. Because if you're committed, you will make it work with the people that employed you. You will commit to creating in that company. You will be even more curious, um, even maybe creating beyond. You just don't, you don't go with energy. I'll deliver what's required or what my job is. You really feel part of the building up the company and you don't fear that somebody will hit you or stab you in the back or you didn't go to, you didn't do a good job. So you have to go. So these are the, the different atmospheres and companies that you can build up. But commitment was one thing that is, is, regardless of what side you are on. If you're the one owning it, if you're part-time, full-time, I don't know, investor. For me, that's like not as essential, but it's for me really willing to look at, am I willing to be committed? And what does it mean to me? And I'm willing to explore it. Because one thing I, in some of the teams I work with, 
and ask that question. It's like sometimes they just say yes and because they know it's a good thing to say. And then when I ask, well, do you use judgments when you, when you didn't create what you decided you should? Um, how often do you let it just ignore it or pass by things that you would like to create? Uh, how often do you uh, allow a doubt to take over and that becoming your story that you're telling yourself day in or out or not a whole day? So I was like, but if you're committed fully, it's like you wake up and you're so energized by the thought, the idea, oh, I'm going to do this today. You don't want to stop. You just want to go on and on and on. And you're like, what else can I do? And then, and, and, and I don't know how to do that. Who can I call? What can I do? There's an engagement energy in your creation that never stops. That's what I see when I'm committed. I never stop. I don't doubt. I go fully on. And I can have a moment where I'm like, ah, and then I continue. And I let it go and I can call somebody like, hey, I'm not doing this. I don't go. Blah. And then there's a question maybe or contribution. Then I move on. But I know that I will always continue. I will not give up. Sometimes, yes, it can absolutely change tracks or we can change the, the idea or the project. Absolutely. But for me, that doesn't mean that you weren't committed. So, for example, somebody asked me how I create classes. Well, I when I choose a class, I know I, I know it will be created. There's circumstances that might change it. I mean, these times have been very interesting, but it doesn't mean that you were less committed. But when you receive the information that something's going on or changing, then you have to be willing to choose. Change, choose, create. And for me, there's always that possibility in every situation. You don't have to have your own company to do this. You can literally do it wherever you are right now. And be aware, are you willing to be a conscious leader, a leader of your life? business where if you're employed it's a con leadership is part of everything a conscious one is willing to be in the question allow things to change move on you don't uh, go into the judgment and make them real and then there's of course you you might be in a company where there is a boss on the top too and at some point you might want to change that too you go somewhere where there's a different energy in the whole company and also low what contribution is this to my life? That's one question I often ask because it's very easily to get in entangled in something you don't like and have a point of view and reaction against it. Again, then you're stuck in it. And if you're willing to ask some questions, one I dearly like asking is, what contribution is this to my life? Because what happens to me, then I'm receiving fully and not stuck in my judgment point of view or reactions that I have in that moment. And it's just a gift. It doesn't mean it's right. It's just a gift in that moment because it's almost like it's broadened my perspective of the whole creation or the whole situation where I am because it's so interesting to come point like you become like a victim or you feel that you don't have a way out or you are in argument with somebody and, and in that moment it's so easy to create a point of view that somebody else did it some some else somebody else is wrong or not good or created the situation. And we're all part of it. And that's again where we don't make ourselves less or victim ourselves and blame it on somebody else. That's something I see. If we start blaming anybody and making anybody else responsible, we sometimes do not take our responsibility, our, our part of it, because it can be more than one part. But I, I often see when somebody's constantly pinning in on anybody else, they have put themselves in a situation where that, and if it's not healthy where you are, you can also move on. Uh, you do have that choice. We all have that choice. And if you have put yourself thinking that you don't have choice, that might be the question to ask about what else can I create it? What else can I choose? What if I had fully choice in the situation? What would I then choose? Because we have points of views and judgments that we sometimes use against us or somebody else and make ourselves, if we get stuck there, what if you're willing to lead yourselves out of it? The boss energy that we use against ourselves is often like the judgments, the points of views. Again, also if somebody else is wrong. And for me, that is the energy where you're not being a leader because a leader doesn't matter where you are in the whole uh, hierarchy, if you want to say it like that. Because um, a really great leader doesn't put himself over anybody. They might lead and they might, they more like encourage you to become greater and allowing you also to fail. Because if you so-called fail, you'll get more information. It doesn't mean we're trying to encourage you to fail, 
but there's an allowance of, hey, you can come also and ask questions when you feel that things, things are going wrong instead of trying to prevent it and, and hiding it and all that, where you don't feel that somebody will kick you or make you wrong for asking a vulnerable question where you feel like, hey, I don't know what to do with this or can you help me? Um, how often do people ask for help in situations or to explore looking at it or saying something in a different way? And this is where I'm like getting very intrigued by companies that are doing in that way. I'm like, wow, this is really accomplishment from also the person that chose to do that. It's so impressive. It's so, oh, you love this one? Me too, oh God, I feel so great in it. <laughs> I bought some amazing clothes today and it was so funny because I was going out for buying something else and I end up in a shop and and she had basically at some point closed and we were just having great conversation. I tried her clothes. I could have bought so much and every piece when we found the right um, size, my whole body just changed and I was like, whoa, this is different. Um, so I was very, very grateful for her and this is again, are you willing to choose are you willing to create? Are you willing to ask questions? Are you willing to receive? Are you willing to receive contribution? Uh, creation in a moment, creating greater, being whoever you're being and also vulnerable in that moment. And it doesn't mean you have to tell your whole story, but vulnerability creates something greater for everybody. And often people, people feel very received when you are vulnerable and also willing to listen. And it is one of those things where when people truly listen, there's people that pretend they're listening, but basically they don't. They just learn they have to listen. And there's a very, very different energy where it's not a manipulation, where it's truly just being there for a person, listening, getting, because you get a different insight of the person. And what you also get if you're a leader in any area with people, when you start listening, you receive so much more information how to contribute to that person now and in the future. And it's, it's truly amazing to just have those moments with people and working greater with people as well. So I've been, ex I've been very fascinated about this. And also the concept of being, being a boss where people um, miss it. They miss that part, but they miss it also towards themselves. So this is also a thing if you are working with other people in that moment, it's not the person necessarily that's above you as a boss. You can be that in that moment too. And that's where I see if we are willing to look at where we judge, where we have points of views, where we doubt and we make somebody better or yourself less or somebody else less. That's where I'm like, that's the, for me the typical boss energy with judgments and points of views and structures it's supposed to be. And for me, the leader is willing to drive people, allow them to expand, to, to get ideas out of the you know where they they are there's a there's more space for them to be it's so freaking cool when i see that because they also feel very relaxed where they work they don't have to think oh well if i don't do good enough then i'll lose my job or they will not encourage me or da, 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 da. if we're willing to look where people can grow they will give so much more back into the company creation project or whatever it is I just heard that there was in the news. I missed the news. Well, I haven't been looking. I don't watch the news all the time, but I missed the news. There was this thing in Denmark, Denmark, Sweden, very interesting. The borders, who's allowed on what side. Swedish people are still not allowed to go over. Danish have been allowed to come to Sweden. And then it got a little stricter. And one company said to people that went on vacation, if you go over to Sweden, you're fired when you come back. Because basically we're the bad people with the corona over here. We don't have more cases than in Denmark. But again, there has been some kind of politics going on uh, that Danish should, people should not, the borders are open for them to come over and they're allowed to come over. And then there's this energy going out around that they're not allowed to. And I don't know how it was created, but I knew, I know when it was created because thousands of people were coming over here um, over the weekend and they still come over. But then they had a queue on the bridge over to Denmark and that became a really big thing. And interesting after that, things changed, not as many people came over. And there was, it, it, they said it also in the government, they're gonna change things and all that. But it, instilling fear in somebody, if you do this, what's allowed, um, we will fire you. Great workplace to be, great way of connecting to people, creating and engaging and supporting them and feeling, hey, we love you that you work with us, so we'll fire you if you go on vacation to Sweden. I was like, wow, what a way of treating people, in, just in general, you, they could, they could phrase it in so many ways. And um, this might be also not quoted correctly to me, but even looking at that and 
getting that in the news, I was like, oh, that's interesting. It might be totally wrong what I'm saying at the moment, but th this is not uncommon to some workplaces where you get threatened or they put a point of view out there or they make you wrong um, and you can go really quickly by that. So that's where I'm very intrigued how, what would happen if we felt really grateful, appreciated, supported in the workplace we were in? What would truly happen? What if we had true leaders in there? And I mean, every person being a leader or majority, because then they can inspire the risk. Because when you're a leader in your own life, it's a very big difference wherever you are. And it's not only your workplace, it's also at home, it's also everywhere. And I was like, this is so different when we're willing to be that. And, and it's constant also involving yourself working with yourself, looking at things, being vulnerable with yourself, looking at what else can I change, create, contribute, um, look at, um, explore with myself. So I'm not saying, oh, well, I'm now a leader. So now everything's great. Well, you're not. Everything can always become greater, humble enough, vulnerable enough to look at yourself. And willing, as for me, it's like, huh, it inspires me a lot to do, what can I contribute to that? And it is possible. And I, I would really like also people to be really happy where they're working. And um, I'm not employed at this moment, but it's very interesting to see. Uh, I have enough experience with it myself. And also now also working with people working with me. I think it's fascinating uh, where I can evolve, where I can change, where I can just take a moment. And then I see the moments where I'm like, I, I back up. I back off. For, to give them space where, where I saw then, well, they were not taking this space. It, they basically chose the same thing as me. And I was like, huh, no, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this energy going. When I did, everybody, and I was like, huh, that was very intriguing to see. So sometimes it's the opposite of what, you're, what it appears to be. So it's really fun just to try something, see what happens. Didn't work, didn't create more. Boom, change it. Let's do something else. But I can't have the target. They have to create this or this is the target or result. Because if I'm result driven, I put up this result that should be created. That's a very different energy. They will also perceive what we're creating. But if I want everything to become greater, what am I creating then? With and for everybody. And that inspires me so much to look at that. Because I don't wake up in the morning and want just, oh, let's create my money. That's the most important thing not at all i like money in my life and money joins joins my party and i'm very grateful for creating money but i'm definitely not determined oh i'll do this because it gives gives me and that and that much or that a much amount of thousands more not at all and and it's so funny to see that because this world is very oriented and gold oriented um, getting the numbers straight and right and hitting the budget or beyond. And if it not, we lay off people because that's better for the numbers. And sometimes you have to lay off people. I'm not saying that that never occurs, but what else is possible? And what can be created if everybody is engaged and it's not only specific putting your job, here's your job and this is your box and behave in it. Uh, well, create greater than your box. What What can we together evolve and uh, distribute and not distribute but basically in a in every company there is so much more and also the creativity during these times is impressive to see some just restructuring the whole business doing something totally different to make it really work and contributing to the world at the moment I was like it's really cool not every comp company maybe can do that easily but why not and this is where we all can look at things and yeah this starts here it starts here. How are you willing to treat yourself? And by that, also willing to treat everybody else and contribute and be. And those are things, those are all the energies for me. It's, it's truly the leadership, no matter what, no matter what position, no matter where in life, when in life. So we all have the possibilities with everything. Even if you go shopping, you can be leader of your life. And it's really, really cool where you can contribute in any moment to everything becoming greater. So good night. Have a beautiful Sunday evening. Bye-bye, guys.